questions for Coach. Coach, you said out in Indianapolis you guys were a little bit behind with the facility here, but they would be okay. So where are you at at this point? When do you expect to be able to move in? And then what benefits immediately and long term do you expect to get out of here? Yeah, so we're in the training room, which is really nice. We're really pleased with it. Um, that was the priority. We basically had to kind of choose um, to be able to get into it, and, and we couldn't function with the training room the way we had it in the spring. Um, so we were able to get that done, so we're in that. It's not like totally done, but it's done enough that we can get into it. Uh, the weight room, we still have some, some work to do. And then, again, we kind of staggered it so the back lobby and, and training, uh, excuse me, um, nutrition bar, that, that's, that's gonna be the last one. So I don't have exact dates, because um, as we all know, all over the country and all over the world, there's things that are you know, coming you know, in a little bit slower, back orders and things like that. But, but based on the schedule, I think we'll be all right with what Jay we need, because we can still do the weight room in here. James, uh, where are you at uh, team-wise at this point of the preseason? Have you made the kind of progress you would like? A and what are some of the priorities between now and an oddly timed opener? Yeah, I think um, I think pretty good. You know, we kind of hit the wall with some of the guys today in terms of install and red zone and third down. We had some young guys that um, that I think. I think, you know, basically the install started to pile up on them, had a few more missed assignments. The other thing is we're doing some creative things on defense and we're doing some creative things on offense that are causing some challenges for the young guys. So uh, this will be great film for us. The competitiveness has been really good. I think we've been really physical as well, which, is, which has been important for us. Um, but it's like, it's like most years. Like, it just depends on what it is. But some things I think we're ahead on, some things we got to get cleaned up still. James, you had mentioned in the spring Mitchell Tinsley going through your speed program and over the summer. That'd be very good for him to see kind of where he needs to be as far as, you know, Big Ten numbers and competition. Where is he now, and did he meet what you were expecting of him over, the, over those months? Yeah, I think if you talk to him as, as well as obviously, you know, what I'm going to say and what Taylor would say, I think he's made significant strides in the weight room from a speed perspective as well. Um, obviously, he's had tremendous production, as we all know, um, and, and tremendous production if you go back and look against Big Ten opponents. So, um, you know, I, I think I think it's going to translate very well for him. But I do think this spring and summer was really good for him in terms of getting a little bit stronger and a little bit faster. James, we talked about some new DNs bringing in Chuck Robinson, but another one who's coming into the program, Danny Dennis Sutton. How's he been looking so far in camp? Yep, it's denied. Just denied. So you know. denied. Denied. Thank you. No problem. Um, good. Yeah, he's just so much more physically prepared than most guys. He benches 400 pounds. He's 255 pounds. Um, you know, physical. Um, you know, comes from a great program that we've had a lot of success. Um, but again, he wasn't able to be here in the spring, and he wasn't here to. Uh, he wasn't able to get here, you know, early in the summer as well. So he's playing a little catch up right now, but. Um, you know, there's excitement for him. Whether it's game one or game four, we'll see. Um, but I think he's trending in the right direction, and obviously somebody that we're talking a lot about probably going to factor in for us. Your messaging about the offensive line has, to paraphrase, been when they play well, I will say nice things about them. And until yeah. then, I will not say nice things about them, give or take. I, I, it took nine years, but I've learned my lesson. Yeah, you, you, <laughs> the other way to do that is not say anything about them at all, which means the decision to say that out loud is not a mistake. What is the thought process behind saying it out loud? Well, I, I mean, I don't know. If you guys ask me a question, I got to say something. It's not like I brought it up on my own. Like, you, you, you guys asked. Um, yeah, but you're good at saying, you know, things not, that may not or may answering. not be true at any given moment. Not answering. Just start talking about other things. No, um, no I just, you know, I, I, I think what I said, you know, I don't think comes off as negative. Um, I don't think it comes off as positive. It's measured. Um, I have felt good in years past um, and and we haven't been able to consistently play at the level that that we need to play at so um, you know, I just kind of decided it wasn't like this big comprehensive plan in the off season in the summer to not talk about it I just said you know I'm not I'm not going to get up here again and, and tell you I'm going to prove it to you and they're going to prove it to you and we're just going to try to get better every single day and every single week 
um, I do think we're making progress. But again, you know, we got to do it Thursday night, September 1st against Purdue, Big Ten competition, blackout, all that good stuff. And then, and then I'll be interested to see what you guys say Thursday night after the game. And then whoever we play the next week, we've we got to go out and do it again. So Because you're only as good as your last competition, as, as we all know very well. So um, it's just taking a measured approach. And the other approach hasn't worked. James, your social media department put out a video today that showcased the two freshman running backs, some highlights from out there in the practice field. Can you kind of give us some feedback from your standpoint on what they've done and maybe adding some physicality? Yeah, they, they've been really good. Um, you know, really both of them. You know, obviously there's been a lot of conversations about, about Nick Singleton, but um, him and Katron, there's a buzz within our program you know, about those two guys and, and what they're doing. Um, you know, I know Sean's really excited about it. Um, I know the young quarterbacks are really excited because they're going to have more time with them. Um, but, you know, I think it's, it's created a really good competition in that room. Um, once again, they got to they got to go out and do it under the lights, uh, you know, against Big Ten competition and and other and other teams and other conferences that we play. But they are big enough, they are strong enough. Um, they both seem to have pretty high football IQs. You know, they don't seem to be overwhelmed. I think the fact that they both were able to be here in the spring and summer that helped too. Um, but they're doing really well. You know, they're they're doing really well. Um, and they both have really earned a lot of respect already in a short period of time. Yeah. Um, has your system the offensive line in a way they operate beyond just the differences that offensive coordinator A versus offensive coordinator B poses? One more time, I'm sorry. Has your system changed the you know, functionality or in-depth system of the offensive line beyond just the, like, Simple personality differences. No, not really. I mean, you know, obviously like, all the things we talked about in terms of development, some of the staff staff decisions that we made, um, in-depth conversations in the off season, and really kind of figuring out what our identity is. You know, um, what do we do well, and what can we build on up front? Are we a zone scheme? Are we a gap scheme? Um, you know. In terms of the running game and the play action pass off of it. Um, you know, I think you guys have heard me say in the past that there's some things that, that we can do um, to, to help our offensive line and, and to help our quarterback, and that is consistently you know, being able to run the ball. That will help us in red zone, that will help us in short yardage and goal line. Um, that will also help us in pass protection because if we can beat up those guys on normal downs, that's going to help us in obvious passing situations. So, it's more, it's more having enough in that we can figure out what our identity is going to be and then play to that you know, the best we possibly can. What do you mean staff changes that you think it helped? Uh, additions, you know, some different perspectives and different state people state. That, we've, that we've brought in into the program um, that have significant experience on the offensive line because that offensive line coach, a lot of times, you know, in, in some circles in coaching, they call it the mushroom society. I don't know if you guys have ever heard that expression. I won't get into the details of why, but a lot of times, a lot of times you're in that room on your own and it's, it's a little bit like quarterbacks where a lot of people have opinions, but unless you've coached that position, um, there's a lot that goes into it. So having some other experienced people that they can sit in a room and talk through issues and solve problems on top of the existing staff. I, I think those things have been really, really valuable for us. Two more do, questions. Do you think because of what you call in a game and what your identity is, what's the difference between having a system and the things you want to do? Like, is there a difference to you of having like an offensive system versus, you know, kind of calling plays and, and going into a game wanting to do certain things? That yeah. Makes sense. So I think that's that's the trick, right? Like you have a system, and your system needs to have enough flexibility within it to take advantage of your personnel. Now everybody says that, and what happens a lot of times is people want to call what their identity is and what they've done in the past. That's on offense and defense, but the reality is you, know, you have to be flexible enough and, and put your ego to the side to do what's best for your team. 
and that's easier said than done um, because you may you may want to be a 10 personnel team you know with four wides all on the field all the time but if you got a bunch of really good tight ends you better have the flexibility to use them I think you see some of the stuff that we're doing with the tight ends that's kind of what I'm talking about you gotta you gotta be willing to play to your strengths um, no matter what maybe in a perfect world if you kind of could build your Frankenstein offense exactly the way you want. It doesn't always play out that way. So you got you to play to your strengths. James, do you think your line has to grow more mentally or physically at this point, the offense? Yes. I, my, I do that with my daughter. She hates that, my daughter Shola. Um, but I, I would say, you know, from a fundamental and from a technique standpoint, we're, we're continuing to work on that and refine that. But it's also the mental aspect, right? You know, you guys have heard me say this at other positions, but even more so on the offensive line. Like, you got to get to the point where it's not just memorizing the plays. You know the plays so well that you can really study the defense. And based on film study and what you're seeing, that you can anticipate what the defense is going to do before the ball snapped. If you're trying to figure it all out after the ball snapped, you're going to have a very difficult time. They're too athletic. Uh, they put you in too many challenging situations. Um, so it's so it's both, and and that'll be all season long because it's going to change. But um, I don't want it to be misinterpreted. I, I like where we're at, and I know this has kind of become the topic right now because I took a different approach in, in discussing it. But um, I like where we're at in both of those areas, but, but we still have work to do before Purdue. Thanks, Coach. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Thanks.